Hey guys, what's going on? It is Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Today is update day, but I have another update for you guys. It's game over. He's done it again. The level one phenom with over 10,000 wins on his level one account has beaten his own world record, not once, but twice. Last time I had this guy on the channel, he got 4,104 trophies. Then he beat his own record, getting to 4,175 two days ago. And look at this, guys. 4,000. 207 trophies as a level one just incredible let's go ahead and jump into one of the replays that got him there right now he's a little bit lower but i was able to get all the replays that led him to this new world record you guys are in store for some amazing gameplay i'm sure there's some of you watching right now who are like dude I'm level 9 or level 10 or whatever, and I still can't get to 4,200 4, trophies. It's just testament to not only the skill of this player, but the refined skill using this specific deck. That's right. It is the 7 legendary deck with Skarmie in there. And, of course, all his legendaries are level one or level 9, I guess, right? Level 9, level 1, level 9. So here we go against Philippe 3, and this is going to be a great replay just to illustrate how, what, how low the margin of error is in these decks when playing these decks is incredible you're gonna see this guy look at he, I mean he took one goblin barrel to the face there on the left tower 826 HP remaining on it but you're gonna see him with a pretty epic comeback I don't think this was the match that got him to the world record but this is one like led up right before it so had he lost this it would have set him back and there's just so much grinding involved in this level one community by the way a huge shout out to all the level one players out there right now there's a lot of them who watch the channel be mills every day in the comments saying i'm going to beat uh, game over's world record good luck bro good luck this guy's just just incredible and uh, i do want to give a shout out to his youtube channel and his twitter and all his social media and player stats profile thanks to statsrail.com all of that info for you guys to follow game over will be in the show notes below so here we go it's sparky time in the back only 322 remaining on that left tower sparky is key in this deck I mean if you're a level 1 player and you want to unlock one legendary card I would say Sparky might be it and there goes the nice rocket value there by Philippe the opponent now Philippe hasn't made any huge mistakes here so far he's doing very well for himself but it's all going to come down to one big monster push as it tends to do with this deck and remember as arrows come down taking the tower down to 228 the opponent has rocket so he could finish this game game basically whenever he wants to he sends in that royal ghost we did not pull it there with the bandit we're forced to play the lumberjack where the royal ghost would just take down the entire tower remember these towers cannot even one shot a skeleton here guys so now we have a knight down to block and a dark goblin to block the inferno dragon log comes down we have viva la sparky in the left lane but she she uh, locks onto that band excuse me as she was mid dash so unfortunately not able to kill her only 20 seconds left the opponent has arrows and rocket in hand arrows comes down 14 hp lumberjack in front of the sparky now we have the bandit now we have the log are we going to be able to do this a predictive log taking down that uh that goblin gang and here it goes sparky is she going to connect with the rage and she is one second left 14 hp remaining on that left tower wow that was an incredible finish there by game over i can't believe the opponent had rocket in hand but just had to spend too much elixir defending there let's go right into the second match here guys against this guy this time we're at the top of the screen you can see the level one is not that hard to do differentiate right guys so the opponent's obviously playing hog freeze here and of course surprise surprise i'm probably going to uh, release a balance wish list video this week because we should be getting balance changes announced usually on this friday and then into game on monday so stay tuned for that but definitely as a surprise to nobody i'm probably going to be including freeze on my wish list so bandit comes down here and you're gonna guys you guys are going to notice if i can speak you guys are going to notice that poor game over with a level one princess tower has to defend everything way more than you normally would with a normal level princess tower the normal dps out of your towers because you know you can't rely on the tower for anything so what he has to end up doing here is use skarmy and log against the hog rider or use a lumberjack and an e-wiz in some situations now in this situation he didn't have enough elixir because he dropped that sparky he uses the e-wiz afterwards but not before that hog gets what two swings 
swings on that left tower. Two hog swings, was that it? Taking it all the way down to 494. But look at this counter push here, guys. We get a bandit. We get a raised up a bandit and an E-Wiz in the left. Meanwhile, Sparky did get one hit on the right tower. Thank you very much. All of a sudden, we're in the lead here after that hog freeze. Maybe a bit of an overcommitment by the opponent in playing as a level one. If it teaches you anything about the game, it's how to really capitalize on overcommitting by the opponent, right? And that was exactly what we saw there with the hog freeze. So a princess at the bridge here by the opponent. Princess at a bridge at the bridge, excuse me, is something that we'll also see game over do, especially when a tower is low, like right now. There it is on cue. Thank you very much. I did watch these replays beforehand. I'm not that much of a of a genius here. So here comes the hog going into the E-Wiz. This time the E-Wiz and the Lumberjack separated there, but it's not gonna be enough because of those minions. Smart move by the opponent there to drop those minions for the E-Wiz, and then they use the freeze, they take that left tower down. So 100 HP remaining on that left tower. Still gonna have to get that left tower down, but the good news is we have 1448 remaining on the right tower. The bad news is because we have no HP on our towers, the opponent does have the damage advantage. So here comes a predictive log. Gonna hit a couple of those goblins, not all of them, but it does get the tower down to 16 HP. Maybe a little bit of an overcommitting with those minions in the left lane. Meanwhile, on the right, we have a Sparky and we have an Inferno Dragon. We have E-Wiz in the left. We only need one hit from that E-Wiz on that left tower and we get it. Left tower down. Sparky comes uh, through with a big connection there and now it's just going to be, you know, game, game over, right? Yeah, pun, pun intended. But here we go, another Sparky. Do you see, you see that freeze there by the opponent? A little bit late there. Allows Sparky to get one big hit. Now we're going to use the defensive hog. When you're using hog defensively in that situation, you know it's probably a bad idea. And there it is. The uh, signature late freeze from the opponent there again on that Sparky. No hard feelings. Just pointing out the obvious. And there it is. Another victory for game over. Let's go into the third match here, guys. These are going to be some... These last two matches are just insane. So check these ones out. This is a Fernand Flow. This guy actually plays pretty well, but this match is going to illustrate beautifully, like I was talking about in the first replay, guys, the power of Sparky in this deck. You guys are going to see exactly what I'm talking about on this match. So here comes a hog for the opponent again, another hog rider. We're going to answer with an E-Wiz and a Lumberjack. We're not about to take any swings from that hog rider. And of course, an E-Wiz plus a Lumberjack without any help from the tower can deny a hog hit if you place them in time. So now we have a mini P.E.K.K.A. and a Dark Prince. And as I was saying, this guy doesn't make that many mistakes except for one kind of strategic mistake. It's not even a misplay in the traditional sense. It's just you should not be playing your Witch in the back against a Sparky. And that's what he does a couple times in this match. And in my opinion, that's what really costs for Nan Flu here the match against Game Over. So here we go. It's going to be a Princess here to play some defense against against that E, uh, Ice Wiz, excuse me. And let's see what Game Over does here. Just a couple hits from that Ice Wiz. Takes the tower all the way down to 10, 10 HP. And here it comes a Witch again. We're going to respond with a Sparky. So that's number one. But that's not on the opponent. Of course, that was the first uh, play. And he played Witch before the Sparky. But you guys going to see, it, you know, going into a Sparky is like going into a bowler. It's it just slow. And, and, and the, the longer it takes on defense, the better it is for the person using the Sparky, using the bowler. In this case, Game Over. Because it allows you to build up more elixir for a bigger push just like this we have that same surviving sparky and then we've been able to really capitalize on this sparky look how much value we've got we got out of that one sparky just biding more time here until double elixir time and we're gonna do it again here i believe maybe not this sequence but the one after that with 10 seconds remaining here in normal single elixir time so here comes the uh, lumberjack meeting that bandit at the bridge they shake hands then boom the skarmy comes down on that lumberjack so now we have now we go into double elixir time. Now we're going to get something going here with the Sparky in the back. So Sparky in the back again. You can tell the opponent doesn't know exactly what to do. They should pressure opposite lane here with the Hog Rider. Instead, they're kind of like leaking some elixir, not sure what to play, and they decide to play the Witch in the back. No, 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 no. That's, that's very risky playing that witch in the back there and, and not able to protect it either with the Dark Prince in. And that's just bad news. Look at this left lane here, guys. And this is going to be intense. This is going to lead to the end of the game here, guys. And can you smell a three crown, guys? I can. 
It's two Sparkies, it's a Lumberjack, it's a princess, it's another princess, it's an Inferno Dragon, and here we go, Lumberjack dies, that's gonna uh, allow us to get some rage here, boom, boom, two hits from the Sparky, it's Sparky Machine Gun, ladies and gentlemen, now the opponent decides to hit opposite lane, but look at all those Sparkies and princesses on the King Tower, and the princesses will finish it off. There you go. Game over again. Man, it's it's really hard to resist using the game over pun every single match. Game over. All right, let's go ahead and watch one more here, guys. Before we end this video, this is another good one here against Javad. So this time we're going against the, the Wizard Rage Combo. You guys, I'm sure if you're mid-ladder, you're very, very, very intimately familiar with that combination at the annoyance of many of you guys. It's funny, I released a video uh, a few days, uh, actually a few weeks ago, excuse me, about the, uh, the least skill cards in the game. And you guys in mid-level arenas, I shouldn't even say mid-level, like the, the 3,500 to 4,500 range, man, you let me have it. And rightfully so. I was wrong, I'll admit it. But I should have included Wizard in there because, man, Wizard is just everywhere in this range, especially watching a lot of these level 1 replays. Like, everyone is running Wizard. That was a good leakage there by, by Javed, uh, just waiting for the uh, Sparky to cross the river. That way he could use the Skarmy against it. Uh, nice job, though, with the, uh, with the Princess keeping it alive. But this is a mistake here uh, by Javed going in with the Balloon. He has no Zap or anything as well, so we're able to respond. And look at this counter push. And that's what I'm talking about this deck. This is a deck about counter pushing, and he's going to do a good job of doing that there connecting for a decent amount of damage to that right tower taking it down to 1342 hp as the tower finishes off that inferno dragon so 40 seconds here remaining in single elixir time kind of a reset mode in this match but you can see we have about a two elixir two and a half elixir advantage perfect time to drop that sparky in the back if you're playing any sparky deck when's the good time to drop sparky in the back well this would not be a good time <laughs> because they have rocket i mean normally it would be a good time but Rocket really hurts when they use it on your Sparky. A nice predictive log there, guys. Getting that Lumberjack to the tower and evening things right back up. And we have Skarmy in hand to deal with his Prince on the counter push. But yeah, anytime they have Rocket, I mean... Look at this guy's deck. He has Balloon, he has Wizard, he has Rage. We knew he had minions at this point, but we didn't know he had Rocket. And you never know what you're going to get here. So now, of course, we're going to be playing Sparky in front of the tower instead of behind. Really no way of knowing that this deck would also be running uh, the Rocket. But that really hurts. When you can take down the Sparky and do a ton of damage to our Princess Tower. Yeah, never, never a good thing. So here we go. It's going to be a Rage Up Sparky down the other end supported by the princess and the log there we're putting some serious pressure in the right lane and we do connect to take that right tower down 25 seconds remaining here in the match wizard down and again opposite lane we sense that we have the elixir advantage and we do here comes the princess in the back being ready for that minion horde minion horde comes down a little bit late with the minion horde but uh, at the same time if it was any earlier the princess would have got it so that was a pro play there by game over and five seconds left the left tower is down that is going to be GG again. Game Over does it again in a new world record. 4,207 trophies. What a beast this guy is, man. I love switching things up here on the channel and showing you some level 1 world record content. Basically, I just wait for new world records to happen. It seems like every 5, 6 months or so, another one happens, usually by game over, and I share that content with you guys. I do want to give a special shout out to my man, Ricardo, and his girlfriend or wife. Either way, you should put a ring on it, bro. And to Alejandra. Alejandra or Ali, uh, he says he loves you. So, a very special message from a subscriber who emailed me so uh shout out to you guys and shout out to all of you guys watching the content and of course game over check out his player stats and profile thanks to statsrail.com in the show notes below along with his youtube channel subscribe to my man game over for daily or, or at least a couple times a week uh level one content by the best in the biz let's face it so guys thank you so much for watching a huge shout out to brent chong my youtube partner check out his information in the description below thanks and as always take care guys